Hola, hola. I am Trek with two Ks. And I am 3D and welcome to Metaverse's The Other Side. Brought to you here on the Gentleman of Crypto Network. Just a heads up, this episode is before we had the idea of bringing the Twitter spaces to the Gentleman of Crypto Network. And so that's why we're talking about the stuff that we're talking about in this episode. Based off you're catching this later, then you are listening to the recording. Thank you for paying attention coming in. I hope you catch the next space on Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time or 8 p.m. Eastern Time. These are Metaversal Spaces chats, and basically we talk specifically about Metaverse, Metaverse content and those rats surrounding it, being almost the second month in, uh, in that I think Trek is, I believe, on a plane uh, heading home from a conference. I'm going to be the one handling this one. So there is about to be a little bit of a dead space, but don't worry. That is just me sending out the invites and letting people know that this is going on. Um, as soon as I come back, we'll be talking about metaverses, metaverse stuff. And if no one shows up, then at least, um, I will be here to give information and talk more. So please enjoy your time and remember I am just a footstep away. Okay. Since I am sending these little messages out, basically, if you've came into any of these before, um, we talk a lot about, um, how to do metaverses out code. So basically how can you do it? How to get some tools to help you. And, and strange it is just three months ago, we, had, we don't think there was any one specific tool to just help people find ways to create do manage and things for metaverses, um, anywhere. And now there is an entire website dedicated to it, where it's just about using metaverses that are, um, gonna, you know, the ones that we have on there are gonna be for blockchain mostly or blockchain connected systems, but they are all, um, available. Most of, almost all of them for, I think we only have one on the that's paid metaverse uh, tool um but for the most fact you can even go as far as building web contracts like for ethereum um completely on uh the no code side um through that metaverse toolbox which is um the link will be in the tweet uh after this uh space tweet so check it out because pretty much if you're trying to get something out of a metaverse. What up, Mr. Danish? Let's see. But yeah, if you're trying to get something out of a metaverse, no, you gotta do it yourself or else you're just gonna be hunting for the right ones to do it. So we're gonna get Mr. Danish in here and he can tell us about his metaversal scenarios, what he's looking to get out of it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you are. I hear you now. What up? Uh, was wondering, are you streaming this on all the platforms? <laughs> not, not at the moment. Okay. Okay. It just sounded like with the. Okay. Oh, it is being recorded. So, you know, I try to keep that in mind. Uh, of course. Makes, makes sense. Makes sense. Well, what are we out for today? Well, um was wondering what people, how people are taking advantage of metaverses, what they're getting out of it and what they're expecting to get out of it and questions uh, around it. So what's up with you? How's you and your metaversal experiences? Oh, um, <laughs> the metaverses experience is, is, uh, it's cool, but like in, in the general aspect of what like the majority of people see as metaverse things, I probably don't do much metaverse. Actually, I don't go into, uh, the Oculus stuff. I don't go in, like, there is a couple of games I, I do, and I interact with stuff in, in crypto and NFTs and that kind of aspect of the metaverse, but I don't do much like, you know, VR gaming or, uh, such and such, because what I actually like, it's more interested in is getting the whole aspect of this actually to work, 
uh, and and like I don't know if you remember um, PlayStation. PlayStation had something called PlayStation Home or PlayStation Tree back in the day. That yeah. probably uh, is what we kind of want a metaverse to be, right? Or you can go in mm-hmm. and play for a five to a hundred different small bullshit games. And at the same time, you can design your own little, little avatar. You can buy clothes, you can buy an apartment, but that failed. Uh, and we still haven't seen any, what do we call a good metaverse that actually is compatible, well, compatible with what PlayStation 3 had, like, what is that now, 10 years ago? Um, I tell you, I, I tell you, you don't play much of Second Life. I have seen Second Life, um, and it, it seems, again, cool and all, but it also, like, with all that, it really limits the people playing it, because, like, that and, and the Oculus thing and, and all those, requires you to have a PC or decent hardware, otherwise it just don't run. And when that is the only way you can interact with that metaverse, suddenly you also, you know, like when crypto, if, if they only came out on Android, they lost the whole iPhone market. If they only came out with windows, they lost the whole Mac and, and Linux, mar- or Linux market. And, and the same with, with games here in, we are going to build games that can only work on, on, on like dedicated hardware, uh, we got to lose out on, on the majority of people because we moved to an aspect where it was going from, oh, we build crypto wallets and blah, blah, blah. You maybe need a computer you to everything can work on a phone because what can run on a phone can run on everything. Um, yeah. Is 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 a mixed mixed aspect for my my point of view because we we don't have a possibility to make a phone VR experience anywhere near the what we want it to be and without like extra hardware, but we also don't want to make a metaverse that cuts the people on a phone and such out. Because we can't afford to buy a ten thousand dollar computer. <laughs> yeah. Now I will point out that most metaverses that are out there, um, they are not VR. Only a, only like a small few of them actually are dedicated to VR. Um, so that is a positive thing that um, most people are liking about that they can use it. Uh, most metaverses on a screen, whether it's on their phone or on the computer. And now I will admit the number of metaverses you can actually run on a phone is probably like two. Um, uh, really small, normally like stuff like spatial or something like that. But for the most part, we're, we're still, we're, we're starting to get to a point where metaverses are being more accepted because, you know, they have been around, they are just basically a socially connected video game. That's really what they are. Um, but what we're seeing is we're seeing metaversal space spaces, things come out, or they're called rooms where it's basically like. A three a three D interactive website. Maybe not actually in three D, but the interactions are in three D. Where instead of it just being, oh, there's a website. I click on the buttons. I go do things. I read the stuff. Um, it may be you know uh, more of a video game style where you actually when you have, might have to find something and then unlock it. Then it will have an animation and open and so on and so on. Um, I've even seen a metaverse website where it was looked like crayon. Um, like it looked like it was drawn in crayon, but it was interactive to the wax blockchain. So as I clicked on things and purchased stuff, more stuff happened and more stuff opened up for me. And, and it it was absolutely what, uh, me and Trek have been talking about probably about two months now, where we were been saying, we're going to see metaverse rooms turn into the new website and, um, but yeah, like we have a toolbox, uh, metaversal toolbox site that has on there tools where you can build solidity contracts and metaverses with or like the room style metaverses at least without any code um and it is kind of cool to to mess with a scratch style solidity builder so you can actually build a contract without knowing any code whatsoever um 
So we're starting to see some new stuff, but I do hear what you're saying as in you want to see more broader types of metaverses that have less requirement hardware. So more types of people can get into it. Yeah, definitely. Because again, uh, even though I have a computer uh, and I have a PlayStation 4 and such and such, my computer is an older gaming laptop. So in itself, it's not good for gaming, even though it's a gaming laptop. Uh, and, um, but it's, it's decent, but just running small things like VR, LAN, whatever, um, even playing Call of Duty, you know, like you're not even talk blockchain stuff. It, it's not just, it, it's not good for that, but it's still like a a thousand dollar PC. So, and, and if we want to onboard the majority of worlds, that that's a big ass. Uh, uh, I absolutely that's agree. Where I go on, and that's uh, where I, I I just see what people has. It's like, oh, we need people to, to, you know, go invest in our, or in our stuff and we need to, and it's like, I would love to invest in your stuff, but I also myself don't have $10,000 just lying around to put into this project and then $5,000 put into this project to just get them lifted up off ground. But I, I, I would like to, if I had the money, but it, it it's that from my own side of you so how can we expect people that oh this game looks fun but the entry price is that I need a new computer and then I need the NFTs there is like starting at four hundred dollars each after I buy a new computer it's yeah <laughs> I, I'm not going to disagree with you like uh, when I wanted to really get into metaverses and stuff and some other things someone like had to donate me a two and a half thousand dollar computer. Just so I could be in bottom line with some of these metaversal, uh, content and stuff. And like, I, yeah, I had to right. build a, I had to build a promo video for someone for a metaverse and it took three days of rendering with this, you know, um, what, you know, on the market is considered a, a medium grade computer, but still three days of rendering just to do a 3d, you know, promo video. But, um, what we're you know, hoping all I'm really hoping to see is more people take advantage of, you know, the smart contracts on blockchains, like I, with the, with the, uh, wax style, like, and the stuff that you kind of do on wax chain, um, th that's an opportunity. I think a lot of people are missing out on where they're like, um, we can make stuff more downgradable because we can actually basically run every, you know, store everything on a system that they can access easily without a computer which blockchain are accessible on phones as well. You know, I've been mining on cell phones since 2013. And so when we're doing that kind of there, then we run API structure front end, which means it's really lightweight. It's really, uh, we can make it dynamic where we only load in as we need to, which means we can have low bandwidth systems. We, so all this stuff is there. It's a matter of getting it all put together and even like, uh, the rooms like spatial and on cyber and a couple of the other like big ones, they do work on phone, but trying to build it on a phone is really, really difficult. Um, like for me, I actually have a, a high end developer phone and I can run, I can like build a space, space, uh, one of the rooms in, on my computer and I can load it on the phone. But when I try to build one of them on the computer, it just drags me down. I have a 3d, um, animation maker on my phone. It's kind of like a uh, blender on my phone. It, it can run high end stuff, but then it, trying to just run the space to build inside of it, it just lags down. So I definitely see what you're saying there. And you're right. Common people are not going to get in if they're like, oh, I need three grand for computer, another four grand for the NFTs. There's a lot of metaverse NFTs. I just had to just bypass them, just look the other way. Cause you know, I'm also yes. one of those people, I don't have the entry. There, there, there's exactly that. And, and that's sad because again, just to interact, like just not even to, to buy all the stuff and be, be the consumer, but to be the developer, you can't develop on something like that. If you don't have any means of testing what you're building. I know the code don't require a big user interface and a graphics card and all that, but 
you cannot, you know, test it out and really figure out if it's working, if you can't do it. So even some of the best developers, like they can do all kinds of shit, can do it because they need a massive computer or massive. It's just sad. And also the, the examples of metaverse that people use is in my mind, really this dirty, um, because, oh yeah, have you seen my metaverse? Oh yeah, have you seen my metaverse? But the metaverse is that I can take my asset from your game and put it into this game. That's the metaverse. It, it, you just build a game on the blockchain. Yeah, I know. Um, everyone expects the uh, Ready Player One experience with metaverses. But if you even look at, uh, like, most metaverses are completely separated um, everywhere. And I do see it as being used as more of like a marketing term than an actual use case. People who are using it for a real use case, they're um, slim and few, but thankfully they are there. Um, yeah, we, we, are, we are definitely. And you can see it's especially on WAX. Uh, me and my team have done it uh, where we took other, you know, assets. They're also our planet did it like the first. They took other people's assets and let you stake them to get their token. Uh, right. We've done other things where if you hold other NFTs, you get like current benefits or, uh, boosting benefits and, and so on. Uh, and, and that's like, you can't expect Disney to maybe pour Robin and use your stuff, but you can use Disney's avatars in your game. If Disney builds a game and yeah, they quote unquote could be mad at you, but in the long term of things, all it really does is making more eyes on them because if, if Disney goes out and builds a blockchain game and it's, it's, it's shitty, it's like a bad version of, of uh, street fighter, uh, the old street fighter, but with Disney figures, cool. Um, then I go out and build another game There's way better. Let's say it's, it's more like GTA. Okay. But now I import and makes it for people that has Disney bigger to use them in my game. And yes, I re-render the skins and stuff for those NFTs. That's my job as the developer, but I can do that. And suddenly Disney has two games, their original game and a game where the assets is used, the, it, and yeah, they can get mad, but it, it's possible. It's where we actually can do it. And also like the are you actually mad about because all it's bringing, is bringing, you know, more utility to, to, to their aspects. But it's something that I've been really wondering since that I was on an atomic space where, um, our wax space where one of the, uh, C, uh, CEOs, uh, was out and talking about how they were trying to, um, onboard games and, and, and stuff onto the wax blockchain, but had problems with people, uh, don't want to have other people using their assets that, uh, blockchain don't really, you know, talks to them in that way. And I'm like. You, you must have given them the wrong information because as a business, it's ridiculous to say no to that. I sell you something, you go and do shit. Yeah, That's the real about, world. And now, I don't, now, I, now I don't know anymore, but on the blockchain world, I, I make something, I sell it to you. You go use it or sell it again, but I still make money on it. Who in the right mind of the business owner would say no to that? Record labels, game companies, and video producers. Who as a business model would say no to that? Normally when I buy a CD, if I gave it to my cousin the week after, no, even if I sold it to him, nobody else than me made money on it. But mm -hmm. if it was an NFT, suddenly the artist still makes a percentage of it, but sell it to him. And the, the same with all those assets, the game, it's, 
And for me, it's uh, there is a big conflict in my head that uh, that somebody doing their job wrong. If you get my drift, I, I do. And right now, the companies are still on control factors. Like I want, I think I was one of the first people that did a burn NFT on um, Wax, where I used someone else's NFT that it could be burned to get a different NFT and. I got a lot of flack for that. So yeah, I do see that also happening in small, few small creators and stuff where they just feel like their stuff is being misused or whatnot. Um, but I am gonna, uh, I see Go is also here and I'm, I'm not sure how to say the other one, Go Peril. Um, but I have invited Go Peril, Go Go Peril. Uh, yeah, what do you got to say? It's the master, master and the messes of the same company. So they're both here. Yeah. Oh, I just, well, Damon's in here and, uh joined in that's my wife she's uh, actually sitting next to me um we're good friends with danish so i was just popping in to see what's going on i was hoping you guys might be talking about that uh article thing that's going around right now the atomic cup of article but uh, i don't know if you guys i know danish you said you were starting to read it or whatever um that's kind of a big deal going on right now yeah it, it is definitely something that i i need to read uh I read everything off to make sure that before I go explode in their Discord channel and such, uh, I I need to make sure that I understand exactly the, what they mean with this. But yeah, it seems like they are uh, even further limiting our whitelist process, which again, as it, wasn't it hard enough enough getting verified on Atomic uh, Hub? Oh, you need to be a company. I'm a single guy making a, a project here because I find NFT is funny. You need a, pr a project, a Discord, a website, 150 followers. Uh, but, 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 um, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's I, only getting worse. It's going to get worse. I really, we've been reading, I've looked at articles. When you read it, I'm telling you, you're going to see some things stick out. It's going to be like, wait a minute. The way they word certain things. And it's like one of the one of the things I would say is uh they're they want to go against people taking other, you know, licensed artwork like like cartoons, you know, family guy, Simpsons, stuff like that or whatever. And uh like some of their biggest artists have shit like that in there. And it's like I feel like there's gonna be <laughs> them being played where they're gonna be able to keep their verification, oh. but if they don't know you, then you lose. Like there's so much, I don't know. I, I'm just, it's. Yeah, there, there is this, uh, cartoons or what, what it's called. Uh, it was made by the R2 projects on wax here. Like, uh, uh it, it's basically there's asterisks and ob or obelix and, uh, uh, there is, uh, Casper, the friendly ghost and there is, bu uh, Bud Bunny and they've made a lot of those where bu Bud Bunny has ribbon, uh, like, uh, or a carrot that exploded mouth and shit like, like that. When they came out, I researched one of the uh, Asterix and Obelix pictures, the Obelix one, where he's carrying a rock on his back. They made three lines on that drawing and put a uh, smoke in his mouth. I think it was, that was the only changes there was on that picture for the original one. Um, but that's a fully verified project on WAMS. Like, not, not just verified, but verified stamped. They're good. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I, yeah. <laughs> like, he ain't going to get delisted or dever, you know? Like, I, and I love, I love everyone on WAX. I don't want no one to get in any, I just don't like favoritism. Like, it needs to be fair for the big boys and the little boys. All of that's us need exactly to be able to have a certain, you know, fair. It needs to be equal. That's all I get hyped. Again, in. again I definitely understand that it can be easier for some people to get a verification. If you have other means of media that can verify that you are somebody, but we've also seen in this space that that not, not always means anything because then Jake Paul or, uh, Madonna or whoever like uh, JC or whoever jumps in and, and, and say they are part of this crypto project and they get verified and, and it's big and it's not just on wax though, but it's on like in general, 
So, so even though they have, you know, they'll rarify on Twitter, they're rarified on YouTube, they're, it don't necessarily mean shit. Um, where again, like uh, on wax, I just helped the pretty daughter get her verification through. And she was like, oh, I can't do it with our personal blah, 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 because there's no nothing there. And I'm like, you are a verified Spotify musician. Of course, they're going to verify you. Like that's, that's harder to get a verified Spotify account than uh, a Twitter verification. <laughs> um, and that's one of the things they normally say, hey, you're verified on Twitter. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to admit, like, when I got my whitelisting on Atomic Hub was before they first start, was before they did the very first change in how the whitelisting verified, verified system worked. And um, then I have had done two other projects. One wasn't my project, but I was doing all the art. Another one was my project, like I did uh, QVN. Um, and I could not get QVN even whitelisted. And the other project where I was doing all the art for the guy, and he had like a best time sellers book, like, and that's what the interviews were for was for his book, could not even get whitelisted. And so, yeah, then moving this, this gold post, it doesn't surprise me any, but at the same time, um, I kind of get why they stuff is hated. I wish it was just more like there's no verify, there's no whitelisting. It is just what it is. Um, and it's like, I like the, uh, nephew blocks method where the more you stake, the more you can do kind of style. Um, I see we also got, um, is that Kai Coyote Plains? What's up, buddy? Coyote. What up? What up? Uh, three Douglas. Nice to meet you, bro. Danish GoPro. What's good? Nice to hear from you too. Nice to meet you. Um, do you have anything about uh, metaverses or NFTs or anything you uh, you want to chime in about? We're just kind of talking about our experiences. Oh man, you know, I love it all the way around. I'm I'm a little concerned about you know the wax thing and what happened today about whitelisting. And y'all can talk more on that, Danish. You can elaborate. But uh, no, I'm pretty cool. I'm meeting a lot of friends, doing you know whatever about the money for me. I'm here to make friendships and connections that maybe down the road that will lead to you know some money, but Right now, we're cool. You, how you doing? No, I'm doing the best I can. And that's actually really good to hear that you're, 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 you're flowing like water in this space, right? And that's what everyone needs to be doing. Um, now I, I guess one thing I want to point out, we were just talking about the Atomic Hub whitelisting verified change. Um, I don't know if you guys, but, uh, Rarible did their verifying change like eight times and I applied every single time to be verified and I still can't get verified. They actually one time sent me an email and said that I would never be able to be verified, even though, um, you know, I'm all over the internet, I'm searchable, I'm findable, like all this other stuff. But so I got a feeling this isn't going to be the comic club is going to keep doing this. They're going to keep pushing the line, pushing the line. And I do know that if you pay the, I think it's 2000 plus us dollars to get their package deal that you normally have to do to get packs. Um, they will verify you if you pay for that service. Um, and, and that, yeah, that is why yeah, I know but that, that, that service kind of died after nifty blocks made the uh, possible to make packs and, and stuff basic for free. Um, so yeah. they have gone down, I think they're all the way down to like a couple of hundred dollars now, but it's still like, oh, is so I can pay you guys to get verified and get a banner up here but I can make money on your, your, uh, exchange or your market for the last year. And mm -hmm. you don't see that as enough to verify me. Even like, like you, if you search Danish crypto on YouTube, a uh, Google pre-search, pretty sure you find me and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, you know how it is. Yeah. Now I like to point out that I have the fourth ever atomic packs on atomic packs contract. And I also have the sixth one as well. Um, I also invented the, the very first, um, pack on wax that when you open it, it gives you itself. 
and it is a musical album. So it, it was a big combination of things. Now, um, me and DJ Meat Pop School, we figured out, like basically I figured out how to do the pack. He figured out how to open the pack back before Nefty Blocks ever existed. And we wrote an article and there is even NFTs with the article built inside of it on wax and on Ethereum, um, explaining exactly how to make the packs, how to get people to open them and stuff. And then it was just like three months later, Nefty Blocks popped up and we were all like, well, thank you because it was a pain in the ass. But, um, just knowing that I can say, yeah, I got the fourth pack on there ever. And when I was figuring out how to do that, I was being bombarded on, um, uh, with telegram by all sorts of people telling me stop stop don't do it and there was one person that hit me up and they were basically crying they were saying hey i just spent 2500 or 2500 dollars for this company to get these packs to get verified all this stuff and now i read your article and I found out i can do everything they're going to do for me other than the verifying for nothing and i'm just like you know these so that I see that they're just gonna keep moving and stuff. And you're right, like now that Nefty Blocks is out, more people are moving to it. Yeah, we we understand also why they're doing it if you look at it from a company aspect. But it's not impossible for them to make Atomic Hub a decentralized marketplace. It wouldn't be uh, impossible at all. If of a community run uh, marketplace. Which basically it's the same as Netflix marketplace. Uh, the same with Net uh, NFT Hive. They they also uh, a curated you run that, or if you have stake in it, they're kind of stuff you go that proposals that, and so on. Of course, you can make uh, proposals to Atomic, but if it don't go into Jonah and uh, Fred's uh, uh, Fred's. Uh, uh, Lightings, they probably don't go through, uh, and it's it's really sad. And I don't know, uh, Douglas, how much you have looked into uh, uh, in <clears throat> Wax Dow after uh, my E Crypto made uh, made Wax Dow updates. Uh, he basically pushed pushed everything onto Wax Dow, so uh, user interface to how they make. A token, so it it deploys a token contract on your wallet. How to make packs? How to make unboxed packs? How to make make drops? How to make pre minted packs? How to make and everything is on wax now. Um, videos and and buttons to click, so you basically like so easy to do. And uh, so so Atomic Pub is gonna panic and like next week is the nft uh hive drop we were like again just just ju just go do something good for yourself uh start instead of listing nfts through uh, atomic hub list it through nft hive everything you list through nft hive you get all the rewards all the stuff you normally do from atomic hub up but you also get honey token on top of that so you get rewarded more for listing on the same marketplaces just for using you know, NFT hype instead of, uh, instead of Atomic. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going out to get some tobacco, so I get some smoke going on because, uh, I feel like myself, I'm not going to sleep if I'm not going to smoke, uh, smoke weed today, but we all know how that is, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Bro, I'm, I'm doing roaches right now i have like a hundred of them but yeah i feel it <laughs> well i have to, I smoke, to admit well i was a little bit of tobacco you know I yeah, yeah it's better than nothing right up. Yeah. <laughs> but uh at least i have pass at home but i still need to, to, to get some tobacco to it uh, I know for your uh, U.S. people, it's probably a, a weird thing to say that you put tobacco in, in your joints, but my my joints are made of uh, like sixty to seventy percent tobacco and past from the rest. There is no like weed in it. If I had enough weed to do it, it would be more like uh, a sixty percent the weed, ten percent tobacco, and then the uh, half for the rest. But uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Here in Southern Oklahoma, we, uh, we call them halfers where they basically do a half, uh, THC, half tobacco cigarette. Um, but also like hand rolling cigarettes are still big here where I'm at. Um, and you know, like, uh, in America, we used to have something, we have something called lucky strike It's the very first, like major production cigarette, uh, filterless. And the reason why they got their oh, name yeah. was one, there was we one, one of them and in, in every pack. Yep. Yep. And that was actually originally for they, the soldiers during war. Time. Yeah. They used that under the, the, the wards to make sure that they like, they didn't know when, but at some time they, they got a little bit more happy under the, the stressful situation. Never. Absolutely. Now I'll mention also too, we got AC five in the house. What's what up, impressive. everybody? How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing good. We're talking about, uh, metaverses, experiences with it and NFTs. Do you want to chime in? <laughs> I could talk forever on all this, you know that. Well, bro, at least so plus your most recent experiences with metaverses and NFTs. Um, cause I know like you were big into the crypto trading. So you, obviously you have some kind of NFTs. Oh, you also, are you still on, um, flow? Is it flow? Yeah. I still got all that. The flow blockchain. Heck yeah. I see there got some more stuff coming up real soon. Um, I, so I recently went to the UFC fight, man, and I seen them at the UFC fight, um, creating like, you know, they were talking about doing all the NFTs. So UFC 279 flow blockchain was there for their UFC stuff. So it's actually coming out pretty soon. So that's what I was, remember that like a couple of years ago when we were, uh, checking that out, they've always had a website for it, but nothing's ever came of it, but it looks like finally something's going to be coming of it with the UFC. Yeah. They actually have five websites that are like that. Just so like that, like there's a couple of them for an, uh, animation, like cartoons and classic stuff, then a couple other different, um, or sorry, I almost think one was either soccer or in, in a NHL or something like that. But, um, yeah, I, I definitely been seeing that it's been a long time coming, but finally coming. I think I actually still have a pack that was supposed to go to you that I've never opened or anything. Well, let's take care of that one of these days. Let's set the NBA top shots. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I never go on it. Um, I still have the NFT on private paper where, um, I, cause remember I stole one of the top shot NFTs and yeah. I did it inside our private, I still have that. I'm still going around so far, still had zero claims. No one has figured out the password. It's, it's pretty yeah. simple. The password is literally my, uh, card number. <laughs> I will tell everybody else, like, uh, kind of like our history together. I'm okay, just so like, I'm new back on Twitter. So it's like, you know, nobody knows me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ACU five, um, fellow Navy man. And then also I was just doing like, like podcasts and stuff. We were listening in on something and here's talking about mining about how basically if you're, if you're a mining company, if you're running a mining company, you should never stop mining. And I joined into the chat. We had DJ meet was there and, um, pretty much. We started doing tradings together, started doing, uh, we used to do, we didn't do it again. We need to do the old, uh, live stream hosting where we're doing our trades. We're kind of putting our, what we think we're going to happen and put those on Twitter and stuff. That was always fun. Um, and then we did a bunch of different NFT projects. Um, we did the whole, like putting your memories in NFTs and where we would actually, I think we had one first actually do it or whatever, but people would take their memories and have them stored in NFTs so they could then distribute those NFTs to their friends. Um, and I do believe we did that on Wax as well as thing. Um, and a lot of we're on Wax blockchain, it seems like. So that is definitely a bonus for this chat because I know, uh, because of like Wax, Wax DAO, I mean, I got the Builder DAO, which was the first DAO on there besides his, like besides the, uh, Mike, Mike D crypto stuff. And so I, I got a feeling that, um, with the combination of wax style and some of the stuff nifty blocks has got going on, we're going to see very soon more, uh, wax based metaverses. And I just, I'm just waiting to the time that someone figures out how to transfer over more data from Ethereum over to wax. Cause I have, um, actually pushed a wax NFT onto Ethereum before I did it the second they had the bridge up before they had a UI for the bridge. I got a hold of the code base and was looking through it and 
I, we, I got one NFT to work. I think I, I think I tried like four times, but I only got one to actually push through, went over and we embedded that inside of another NFT and sent it to somebody and they were able to open it and get the NFT out on the inside. And it was absolutely insane to do. So I'm wanting to see people do it the other way around. Um, right now with Ethereum, uh, uh, POS, I'm a little afraid because I don't know if you guys have noticed the fees have been outrageous. Um, the fees increased like it was like 250% overnight, like the, you know, just within minutes after the, uh, the merger, I think actually the very first NFT yeah. down on the merger it was 30, 32 ETH. It, it, it was right at like two minutes after the merge, the fees increased by 7,000% from what they have been at for like the longest time. And it's so ridiculous. And it's, oh, but it went through uh, perfectly. But nobody came up with the, the genius question that for that merge to go flawlessly through means that the Ethereum foundation that has majority control over 51% of mining pool. Yeah, because still otherwise over they still hold over 70%. Yeah, because otherwise they would not be able to shut down enough miners to make this flawlessly. Because if you look all all the pools and all that that has been out uh, for the last month or so, they are 50-50 split with what will happen, how will it go, blah, blah, blah. Because the community was not agreeing on this. But since it went through smoothly, means that they have majority control of that, Jay. And now taking it from the centralized proof-of-work mining algorithm to our uh, Proof of stake, the bigger bag, the bigger, the more power. Um, of course, now, now it's truly a centralized blockchain. Well, it's, it's, if, uh, if you know what's going on with the World Economic Forum and all the crypto projects that they've been involved with for the past couple of years, all they're doing is linking it all together into the World Economic Forum for the whole Great Reset. And they're using Ethereum for that. Yeah, I know. I know. It's been a lot of that also. It's a, it's a nightmare. Yeah, no, that's now. I've always known what was going to happen. That's why I've never held Ethereum. In fact, I don't even use Ethereum at all, man, honestly. Yeah, I do everything I can not to play with it. Um, now, I, I did notice that it was 24 companies um, within 10 minutes after the merger was considered done. Um, started, they started tweeting out things about something dot ETH, something them dot ETH and even Budweiser, you know, this is for the merger and there had a can that said, um, by dot ETH or bud dot ETH, beer dot ETH. And at first I thought it was a CG can and it turns out it's a real can. So they had it made months ahead of time. And I've been saying since the ideal of the Ethereum 2.0 came out originally, what, 2018, I think it was, I, I've always said, uh, proof of stake is all about control. They, there's no reason to go to that except for control. And um, I have found some documents I haven't, I'm not ready to release yet, but I, uh, there may be proof that the economic forum has been pressuring companies to not involve themselves in proof of work uh, chains. And in one of the documents, it actually said because governments were going to flip on proof of work. And so now I think this is a little bit more proof of that, but um, just think about it like this, you know, it used to be, that, that if you wanted sense. to mine it, that made sense. and, but if, like, if you wanted again, to mine Ethereum, yeah. you could, you would just up and down whenever you want. Now, if you want to mine Ethereum, your machine has to be online for eight days, approximately, which means it can move and has to have 32 ETH state, um, the entire time. Like if you go down for one second, you have to start your, your eight days over. Yep. Um, plus that again, you need to become a full node validator. Uh, it's not enough that you need the, that the system to run that node on, which is again, like running a server because that's basically what a node is. That's a server. And so we need the hardware to run the node on, but then you also need, need 32 ETH 
to stay on to that node and that 32 ETH is now locked up. So other than you just bought a PC or a server for $15,000, then you put in 32 ETH, which is what a hundred thousand dollars and those yeah. money never come out again, but you of course will start getting staking rewards, which eventually will give you your money back. But that's a damn long ask and maybe an if and so, because you're already 150 K down. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's not like some of uh, nodes and servers, like I have uh, cell phones where I run Dogecoin servers. I've run Dogecoin nodes in the past and I was looking at the specs required for the new Ethereum nodes. Cause the previous Ethereum nodes, you could run that on a Raspberry Pi 2. It was that low in scale. But now um, they're so high up that if you're not running like a blade or a multi uh, multi internal server, you're not getting very far. And I've been seeing pictures of people posting like uh, something similar to Adreno, and I was like, but the, there is no microcomputer that matches the RAM spec and the uh, Hertz spec for the new Ethereum nodes. Yeah, Danish. But yeah, so like when they're saying that the cheering them, electricity costs going down, it ain't going down by much. Nope. And again, oh, hey, it's so bad for our environment and all that. But even if you're running a node, how do you get that power for that node? Are you using solar panels, wind panels? Because many of the people running mining farms are using renewable energy. So if you're not doing that, what is, what is really hurting what? Yeah, I think the best one I've seen so far was there's one in Oklahoma where they have solar panels that basically run a heater and they have water and that, you know, it's basically a steam generator, creates steam from the water, uh, from the, uh, solar panels. That then runs a generator, which then produces all their electricity and use. But where they do the cooling, they have water cooling where it goes down into the earth some, and it actually runs over turbines. So even if there is no solar, their downfall of the water to be cooled runs itself. And what they're able to do is they're actually able to patch into the grid and where they're at here in Oklahoma, they actually get a return back for grid uh, overproduction. If they're pushing into the grid, they actually get paid for that. And they're a huge facility. They're like the fourth biggest in America. And most of the money they were actually making is return from electrical output. And it's all a hundred cent renewables, a completely enclosed system. They have no, well, I think it's like 1.2% water loss and being able to have like got to work on that project a little bit, I got to help uh, set up some of the computers and stuff. It was absolutely insane to see people do, and they're using the ground to cool it, the water. So there's no, no extra anything. It's just as simple as it can be. That, that's how it, it, it kind of should be. And see, we have people like, this is a proof of, we have people actually wanting to do this. So even though Ethereum went to proof of stake, but if server is running that, like Wax, Wax is a blar, uh, is a green blockchain. I had this discussion earlier with the, with the NFT hive and, and stuff like, yeah, wax is a, is a more green chain, but if the block producers of wax are not using renewable energy, how much better than so many other chains is it? Because yeah, it uses less than proof of work probably, but if the proof of work is fully running out of renewable energy. You're not making any difference whatsoever. Like, <laughs> yeah, now I have to admit, yeah, you're right. They're basically not as green as they're claiming. All of the proof of stakes are not as green as they're claiming. So, uh, there was, I can't remember the name, but like one coin or something. There was a, a coin where they did, um, it's a proof of stake coin, but they had this proof of work thing inside of it that was kind of fake. They, they were, we made that. No, 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 not that one. Like another one, they were trying to mimic what we had done. Um, and I got into big fights with these people on Twitter, um, back when I was a solar radioactive 3D, but, um, uh, basically their, their proof of work is guessable. 
So they, they're all of the proof of work miners just kind of guess. And when I was looking into how, how cheaply could you destroy that entire ecosystem? Um, a, you could destroy their ecosystem for under three grand. Um, but B, what I found out was almost their proof of stake nodes run as a miner, which means it's constantly using energy and data, even if there's nothing coming into it. And then that made me go, well, what about other proof of stakes? And so far, every proof of cha stake chain I look into, their nodes are basically the same thing. They're always hunting and looking for something, which means they're running all the same amount of power what just on a smaller machine. What they're because, yes. but, but, but again, the bad spot barely makes it a bad thing because like a torrent, when you're searching music, if nobody, just because nobody is searching for it, is sharing it, nobody will be able to search it when they need to, because nobody's sharing it. So they would need to keep it up. But again, if the power they're using to keep it up, don't come from green sources, all the claim that they're making is out in the water. They need to think about that or remain, but there is also the, the security aspect of proof of work compared to proof of stake, as you talked about, because if you have big targets, you can take over basically whatever proof of stake network you want. Exactly. That's what, happened, if the, what happened with us when we created a project like that. Literally, once it was put up on GitHub and it was working blockchain, once we set up a miner to it, somebody else came in and fucking pre-mined all the coins because they had majority of the hash rate. She then, then was like, if you've done that with proof of stake, somebody would have just gone in and buy it on the market and then being the, the producer of the coin. But with your hash rate, again, if you have, if you have stumbled that, like every 10 minutes, it's a blog. And so like Bitcoin and whatever else, uh, proof of work uh, chain out there. Of course, the first people in get rewarded more, but the more people in, they don't, they, they don't, uh, exclude anyone for participating, even though that the more I have to throw in, uh, like machine power, the more I have to get back, but I still using that power to protect the network and take my portion where if I'm just a proof of stake network. Uh, you launch today, I go in and drop a thousand dollars and now I control your market. It's like, no matter what you do, I just plummet your price. I boost your price, I plummet your price, I boost your price, I plummet your price. And, and yeah, it's, there is good and bad in both. Like I, I really love projects that started out with proof of work until they got enough tokens delegated out and then change to proof of uh, state or it's running both algorithms at the same time. Uh, there is some, some good things there that maybe other people could, could learn something from. I'm, I'm not sure, but I definitely know there is, again, the security aspect does that none of us here, even with a billion dollars has the computer power to, uh, to brute force attack the Bitcoin blockchain because of the proof of ethics rate there is produced to make that network safe. We can't say that for any of the proof of stake networks because the proof of stake networks is not securing the network. It's just securing the pro the sh sh uh, production the of new currency. It's, yeah. Not, not really the chain's, uh, uh, security level as much as proof of work mining is because that's like, uh, running massive anti drivers is to make sure that everything mm -hmm. is right where proof of stake is more like, again, the more I have, the more I grab, the more I have, the more I grab. It, it don't make the network safe, safe as per se. Yeah, absolutely. Now I will point out that back when Ethereum was still proof of work, um, there was a guy who had a YouTube channel. I don't know if it's still there, but he was showing people live on YouTube. Um, uh, when I say live, I mean like he was recording what he was doing live. Uh, I was actually live on YouTube at the time. But he was doing the stuff where he was literally in private keys off of AWS and he was chilling people's records 